All right. So in order for us to understand the basic operations of a, of a pump, uh, what happens, like we saw in our picture, is that the piston will be moving back and forth. Okay, so this is our piston, it will be moving back and forth in that direction. As it moves in, it displaces that liquid to the outlet. As it moves out, it sucks in the water. So it is sucking in the water or the liquid from whatever source that we are pumping from. So that is what basically uh, the pump is. This pump that I've drawn here is known as a single action pump or single acting. They might use those two terms, single acting or single action. It just means the same thing. So uh, whenever we read a question, let us be uh, very careful to, to take note of uh, the terms that they are using. So this pump only displaces a liquid in one action, which means it will go, when it goes in that direction, that's when it displaces, that's when it pumps out water. As it is moving back out, it does not displace any water. It is actually just sucking in. So it only does one, one action in one cycle so it's just one action per one cycle uh, that cycle is the, the the piston going in and out that makes one cycle and that is what we'll be looking at just a single action so the distance that the piston moves that distance that the piston moves is called the stroke stroke length okay so if a piston moves from that point to that point it has made one stroke if it goes back it will just fill up it is completing that one cycle so the volume of the pump volume of the pump is just how much liquid is contained in that chamber so volume as we know volume is equals to the area times the height in this case our area will be the area of the piston then we multiply by the stroke length. Okay, uh, when we calculate for this, just make sure that your area is in square meters. Your stroke length is also in meters, so that it becomes much easier to convert from uh, cubic meters to uh, to liters and so on. So what we want is that our volume is always in cubic liters, cubic meters, sorry, and that is what we are looking for. However, if we are given in centimeters, we are given the stroke length in centimeters, then we will calculate it uh, in, in, we will convert it to meters. If we are given in millimeters, we convert it to meters as well. But what we want or what we are aiming for is to give our answer in cubic meters. So that is about the area. Now they may ask us, calculate the volume after a number of strokes. If it does maybe 10 strokes, how much volume of water will it displace? after 10 strokes so you still take your volume this volume is uh, per stroke how much liquid has been displaced per one stroke this is what you get just the area of the piston uh, times the stroke length but if they ask you after a number of strokes you just take the volume per stroke then you multiply by how many how many strokes you are looking at then you get your volume like i mentioned one one revolution or one cycle that is one stroke so if it makes maybe 30 revolutions or 30 cycles then you multiply by the number of stroke because what we are saying is what one stroke is equals to one cycle or one uh, it's a single acting one delivery of what one stroke gives us a delivery of water then we get our answers then like i mentioned uh, our volume will always be in cubic meters. If they ask us, give your answer in uh, liters, then we, we know that one cubic meter is equals to 1,000 liters. That is just an easy way to convert. So if we get our answer in cubic meters, we multiply by 1,000, it gives us our answer in uh, liters. And now here's a question that we can practice with just to get a clear understanding of what we are looking at. Uh, the question reads as follows the effective pressure in a single acting piston pump installation is 550 kilopascal during a delivery stroke so this pump it's a single acting pump okay it's just important that you take note of that term single acting or single action pump so the pressure that it gives or the pressure that uh, is in this pump is 550 
kilopascal. Again, watch out for the prefix values. Kilo means a thousand. Uh, the question continues to say the piston diameter is 150 millimeters and its stroke length, I'll use H for the stroke length, is 250 millimeters. Calculate the volume of water in cubic meters displaced during the delivery stroke. Uh, the next question says the work done during the delivery stroke. All right, so with this question, uh, also keeping in mind that it's a single acting uh, pump, we do not need to, to do anything with it. If it was a double acting pump, then everything will be, after we get our volume, we'll multiply it by two because a double acting does twice in one, uh, in one stroke. But for a single acting pump, it only delivers once per stroke. So that is what we are looking at. So for our volume per stroke, as the question says, we're just looking volume per stroke, which is uh, volume is equals to the area of the piston times the stroke length, the height. In this case, we have our stroke length, which is 250, but for our, our area, we do not have the area of the piston. However, we can obtain our area using our diameter. So we can use pi times diameter square over four. This gives us the area. So we will be able to get our area. Then we multiply everything by our stroke length. So our calculations will be pi times uh, the diameter, 150. Now 150 is millimeters, 150 is millimeters, so we indicate our prefix value for millimeters times 10 to the power minus 3, then we divide that by 4, then we multiply times the height. Also the height is in millimeters, 250 millimeters, so it is exponent minus 3. And what we'll get is the volume per stroke, uh, which will be 0 0.0044 cubic meters. The question specifically asks us to give our answer in cubic meters. That is what we have. It is very important that we convert our, pref our prefix of every unit. We watch out for those prefix values. So this is the volume per stroke. If they had asked how much uh, water is being displaced after 10 strokes, then we multiply this by the number of strokes, like we mentioned earlier. We multiply by 10, that will give us uh, the number, the amount of liquid displaced in 10 strokes. But for this question, it only asks per stroke. So it is uh, 0 0.0044 cubic meters, uh, we can say per stroke. This is how much liquid is being displaced per stroke. For the next question, it says the work done during the delivery stroke. Now, uh, work done is equals to the pressure times the volume. So in this case, we have our pressure, 550 kilopascal. We have our volume in cubic meters, the one that we have just solved. To. So we take our 550. Again, our 550 is kilo, which is to the power three, a positive three. Then we multiply by our volume, 0 0.0044 cubic meters, and we get our answer in joules. Okay, so work done is in joules. So it is just simple calculations. How much work done is done? How much work done uh, after so many strokes, you would have gotten your volume displaced after maybe 10 strokes, then that is the number you use there, then you get your work done. So work done is always in joules. If they said uh, in so much time, then we get our time, we divide and we get our power. Uh, for the pump, work done is achieved when a liquid is displaced over a distance and for us to displace a liquid, there has to be a pressure that moves the liquid, there has to be a force that moves the liquid. So in order for work to be done, what we said is that work done is the force times the displacement, which we said uh, work done is also equals to the pressure times the volume, how much uh, volume of liquid we have displaced. Now, with this in mind, we will keep calculating for the displacement or the work done, considering how much displacement has been done. What I want you what I want you to take note of is that there are a few definitions. Let's say if we have a pump, this 
Okay, if we have a pump that is pumping or sucking water from a distance, that distance that it is uh, sucking or pumping the water from up to where it is delivering that distance that is how much the pump is doing it is not just the distance from where the pump is to where it delivers the water but it is from where it is taking the water from to where it delivers the water that is the displacement that is how much work is being done because this pump also is sucking the water it is doing work to bring it to this uh, uh, level and also to push it upwards so this distance from the water level where it is pumping from to the delivery point this displacement is called the static head okay static head is basically the distance from the water level from where the water has been uh, pumped from to the level where the water has been delivered so the pump does work based on the static head and the static head is the uh, the distance from the water level up until the dis the the water up until the point where the, the water is being delivered that is the static height and then there is also distances that you uh, you start looking at the distance from that point where the pump is to where it is delivering that is the delivery this will be called the delivery head okay it is just the distance from the pump to where the water is being uh, dis uh, delivered then the distance from the pump to where the water is this is now called the suction suction head so you can have terms where they ask you how much work is being done by the just the sucking head and also the distance uh, the work done by the delivery head so they have we have those two but the total work done is the work done from that point where the water is being pumped from to the, that point where the the water has been the, uh, delivered again you may find yourself with uh, a tricky question where you are maybe taking water from a suspended height let's say this is our pump then we are delivering water up to that height okay So the distance from the water level up until this is where we are we are pumping from this is where we're delivering so this is the in this is the out and we are delivering our water in that in that container up there so the distance from the water level up to where we are delivering this distance here this will be your static head. The distance from the water level up until the pump, this will be your suction head. The distance from the pump, from the pump to the water where it is being delivered, this is your delivery. Okay. So now the static head is equals to your suction head plus your delivery head. Okay. So in any case, what we are just looking at is how do we calculate for the for the work done? Let's say for example, if in this diagram our delivery head was 20 meters our suction our suction head was maybe 12 meters from that point to that point so our static head this pump is only doing work because it's only doing work based from that point from that level of the water up to that point this is where the pump is uh, delivering our water only from that point that is our static head in this case it will be this suction head in this example is a negative 8 meters and the delivery head is a 20 so our static head is equals to 12 meters it is only doing work based on 12 meters because even if we switch off this pump the water 
that we have in our container from where we are pumping it from, it will always level up to that point. So the pump only does work from that point pushing it into there and that is why come we have our static head as 12 meters. In this example, if you are pumping, your suction is 8 meters, your delivery is, is 20 meters, the static head in this case will be 8 because we are pumping from that point to that point, from this point to that point, then it will be plus 20. Our, our static head will be 28 meters. That is how much work is done because it is doing work by sucking the water, bring it to the pump and also deliver it over a distance. In this case, the pump doesn't do much to move the water from this point. The water will just drain itself, find itself at that level. The pump is only doing work in pushing this water a further 12 meters above that.